Alrighty, welcome everybody. It's Tuesday and I hope you're as excited as I am to see what we're going to be making together tonight. Um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Julie Brown. I am a Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator uh, and I live in Farmington, New Mexico and welcome, welcome. So glad that you're here. If you're new to uh, doing Facebook or watching this video, just make sure that you can, uh, I just want you to know you can type in the comments, let me know you're here. And if you have any questions on anything that I'm showing you, you can also ask those questions. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, one, please subscribe to my channel. Um, two, you can still type in comments. You won't be watching it live, but I will go back and check. And if there's any questions, I will answer those at that time. So yay, um, welcome, welcome. So glad to have everybody. So while I'm waiting for everybody to get online, of course, I don't know how many will be on, but we shall see. Hey, Janine. Um, we're going to go over some housekeeping. So this is my April hostess code. Uh, so if you do place an order with me this month under $150, please make sure you use that hostess code. You can order through me at juliebrown.stampinup.net. You can email me at juliescreativestampin at gmail.com. And then my Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram pages are all Julie's Creative Stamping. And my YouTube channel, you have to actually put my name in first, Julie Brown dot Julie's Creative Stamping to find that. Also, the probably the bottom one is one of the most important ones. That is my blog. And if you go to my blog, that is where I have step-by-step -step written instructions for those of you that don't like watching videos. Um, you can check out my blog. Plus, if there's cards that I make, that I end up not doing videos on, they will also be on my blog. So always make sure you check out my blog. That's always very important. Alrighty, so tonight I have a surprise. So I was working on this, uh, uh, I think it's called the Symbols of Fortune Suite. And then guess what came? My pre-order for the new catalog. So my catalog, my pre-order came in and then I was like, oh, do I show them the pre-order? Um, do I continue doing what I'm doing? And so because my pre-order came in, we will be doing this card, the Crane of Fortune card bundle suite. And then I'm going to use one of the new suites with the Crane of Fortune and show you a second card. So I want to get started so we have time to do this. So uh, let me just show you this. Now, The this is the suite. It's the Symbols of Fortune suite. Beautiful paper, beautiful suite. So let me just kind of go over what's in the suite. And you can find this on page 23 of the mini catalog. So you get the, um, the Crane of Fortune stamp set. Now, for those of you that know me, this is a distinctive stamp set. And I'll show you what that means in a second. I love distinctive stamp set sets. I always buy them when they're in the catalog. Um, and so there's a couple of dies that work with the stamp set. So obviously that one cuts that out. This one cuts the bird, the bird, the crane. This one cuts out the little dragonflies. And this one here cuts out this leaf. Now it also has three standalone dies. Um, and what standalone dies mean is that you don't have to stamp something um, to stamp it out. You can stamp these out and they add to any card beautifully. It also, in the suite, it also has this beautiful shimmery. I don't know if you guys can see the shimmer and shine on this. This is the soft succulent ribbon. And then it has these polished dots. And then it also comes with this mother of pearl. And you guys have seen me use this. I don't, yeah, there you go. You can see, isn't that beautiful? Mother of pearl specialty paper. And then this is the designer series paper. And you can, guys can see it's got the gold filigree in it. Absolutely beautiful paper. So let me get started so that we can get through both cards tonight. I don't, I know that sometimes it gets a little tedious watching too long of a video. So I want to try to keep it as short as I can. But I got so excited with the pre-order that I just had to make a card really quick. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so for this first card, um, I am starting with a basic gray base. And I've already um, scored it 
uh, five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. And again, I can't, I cannot stress to you guys enough to always make sure you're burnishing your edges really well. That is so, so, so important that you get all that burnished well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, look at this paper. Isn't this just pretty? I love this paper. Um, so we're just going to adhere this to the front of the card base. Even this other side, even though it doesn't have the gold, isn't it pretty? Yeah, I like this paper a lot. I can't believe it's taken me this long to work with this per particular suite. Alrighty, so we're just going to place this on like so. And then we're going to kind of be setting this aside. Okay, so what I wanted to do was kind of do all the stamping and all the die cutting right at the beginning and then assemble the card at the end. So this is what I have so far. Okay, so what I did, and I did this ahead of time just to save time, but I stamped the crane and the flower. Now, do you see how beautiful that flower is when it's stamped? And do you see how it's got the dark and light, sh light shadings? That is a distinctive stamp set. And so how, you, how do you tell if they're distinctive? Well, if you look in the catalog, let me show you the trick. So right, see here's the stamp. See right down here, it says distinctive. That's how you know if they are distinctive stamps. So always be looking for those if you end up liking the whole distinctive look. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to use my um, mini um, die cut machine. And I have misplaced my scissors once again. I hope I didn't throw them in the trash. I have a tendency, my trash is on the right-hand side of me. And I have a really bad habit of throwing my tools in my trash. I always have to be real careful. Um, the only reason I'm cutting this in half is because I'm going to bring in the mini. Um, and it can only be like, I think it's about three inches wide. All right. So we're going to bring this in. And we are going to set this up. What I do with the dies? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and, um, and let me, let me show you a trick. Something that I do before I even put it on the die cut machine is I will actually get it lined up, especially if we're working with things that have like these really skinny legs like this crane does. And I will get it all lined up the way that I like it ahead of time. And then I will just kind of tape it down um, with this. You guys know I use these post-it note tape. It's like a washi tape, but it's post-it notes. And then let me see if I can, I don't know, sometimes the dies are too close together. Uh, but let me see if I can um, get that to work. Oh, good. It's not going to be too close. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut these both out at the same time to save us a little bit of time. All right. So we're going to stick that on here. Let me get this in there. All right. And let's get it to run through. Oh, I didn't get that on straight. So hopefully it'll run through. Okay. I kind of had that messed up. Hey, Pat. Oh my goodness. How are you? I'm so glad you're with us tonight. How exciting. We miss you at class. All right. So we're just going to set that, those pieces to the side. And then I'm done for now with my little crane die. Sorry, I'm trying to stick all this back on here because I'm going to need it in just a second. And then I got that cut out. Now, some of the pieces that I needed for this card, I cut out ahead of time so that you guys wouldn't have to sit and watch me cut out every single piece. Um, so again, I'm going to, you know, show you how I set this here. And... Uh, this is just what I find easier if you just kind of get it all lined up. 
before you, uh, sometimes it's hard when it's sitting on the die cut machine, even if it's the big die cut machine, sometimes it's hard to get it lined up properly. And so I have just found that this works pretty good. My tip for the night, right? <laughs> And let's see if we can. So what I did is, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I stamped it full color and then I stamped off because I wanted two shades of these leaves. And always remember you can do that. Sometimes, you know, we we think that uh, we can't, ha if we only have like one color of green stamp pad, that we only can get that color. But if you'll notice, like I just did, all you have to do is kind of stamp off and it gives you um, a completely different shade. I mean, it's still green, but completely different shade. All right. So let's put this down. Ah. See if I can get all my pieces and parts pulled away. Trying to just stick these here so they're easy for me to get to. And then I've just got one more little leaf to, um, actually I've got one more that I gotta cut out. So one of the things that I have found helpful is that when you're doing a card, um, and that's why I showed you I had done the stamping, I try to do, um, when I'm doing my cards, I try to do the stamping first, uh, and then any die cutting that needs to happen, and then, assembly. I don't always do that in my class, huh, ladies? But I try. I think that's going to be my new little thing is making sure we do it in that order because it just really helps um, that, you know, to have all the pieces cut, all the pieces stamped, and then you're ready to go. And I know I haven't always done that in my classes, but... We are gonna start trying that, see how that works in class. Okay, then I'm going to bring in a piece of that beautiful um, mother of pearl paper, and I'm going to cut out two of these standalone dies. And again, the reason I call them standalone dies is because they don't necessarily, they don't go with a stamp. So it's not like you have to, um, you know, stamp it and then, um, like I just did with those other dies. These dies stand alone. They uh, can be, uh, you know, cut out and used without having to stamp anything. And the other nice thing is too is that, you know, that that makes it so that they're uh, they work really well with other stamp sets that you have. So that's one of the nice thing about the standalone dies. So every set that you have, you kind of want to pay attention to which ones are the standalone dies. Oh, you know what? I just cut, oh my gosh, I cut through two pieces. I was wondering why that felt so thick. So now I have a bunch of little mother of pearl ones. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, why is that paper? I didn't remember it being that thick. Well, it's not. I just happened to have two pieces but look at that, the die cut right through both pieces. Good on ya, little machine. All right, so let's move this. I think I have all of my die pieces cut now. And I've got all of the stamping except for the inside of the card. So let's work on the inside of the card and get that stamping done. And so one of the things that I like with my Stamparatus, we get these fun little, um, papers and I thought oh these would be really good for when I'm not wanting to have like a big sheet here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with this large flower and we are going to ink this up with calypso coral ink now for this card I just went directly with all of the colors that match the paper um, that's the nice thing when that when it comes in a suite uh It'll, sh it'll tell you which colors uh, coordinate with the paper. So I'm just going to come in and we're going to stamp that in this corner down there. See how pretty that stamps? That's so beautiful. 
Ah, I love distinctive stamps. They make my job easier, right? I can make really pretty, really pretty cards with basically just stamping. All right, and then I'm gonna come in with this little saying here and the um, soft succulent ink because that's one of the other colors that matches up with this um, suite. I'm just gonna bring that down so I don't have to try to get my head in the shot. And then, like I said, if you have any kind of graph paper, if you learn to put your, get your paper straight before you stamp, you have a much better chance of stamping straight. It doesn't mean you will, and especially when I'm trying to do this on camera where I can't like sit, get my head down in there, sometimes I don't get it straight. Now the reason that I stamped this one up so high is because I stamped a big flower and I wanna give plenty of room for writing. But I'm also going to add in our fun little dragonflies, and we're going to bring in some smoky slate for that. That's the gray that goes along. Even though I used a basic gray base, um, smoky slate is actually the gray that goes with this suite. All right, so we're just going to stamp those. All righty. I think we are ready to start assembling this card. Whoop, whoop. Oh no, the wind is messing up the connection. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know it is, for those of you not here, it is so windy outside. I was wondering how my hair was going to look because um, I just got back from delivering the kids to Tori because they had activities going on. So I wasn't sure how that worked. Oh, you know what? Dang it, I forgot to... My cardinal rule that I always for tell you guys, wrap the ribbon before you lay it down. And what did I do? I didn't wrap the ribbon. So I am just going to take this. Now, let me show you something. I have this from my Cricut. But if you guys have a um, take your pick tool, this also works really well for getting underneath and loosening up things. Um, when you mess up like I just did. Um, so this is another, uh, that spatula end works really well for that as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do, since I forgot to put it in ahead of time, I am going to use a couple of glue dots. Maybe. <laughs> okay, now i got to turn this back around so I can use my pokey end. All right, so I'm going to put one on this side, and then I'm going to put one on the other side. Oops. Maybe. Ah. It's sticking to my little mat here. Ah. <laughs> All right, so let me just kind of lift this and stick that under. Do I want it that high? I think I want it a little lower. Okay, and so what that double um, glue dot does is it really helps it hold it in place. Okay, so now I'm gonna come over here. Now I'm gonna trim this because I'm having to um, try to shove it underneath and so I don't want a lot of extra ribbon for this. All right, so Anyway, hope I hope the connection, I'm watching it on um, my computer as well, um, and it's showing okay on my computer, so um, I hope everyone's is okay. I hope everybody is okay, and we're good. All right, so then I'm just going to pull this across and just kind of make sure it's nice and tight. And then where's that? Well, I'm gonna use my Cricut tool because I switched my take a pick tool again. And then I'm basically gonna kind of go underneath and lift this up and then just fold that. I'm gonna push that under with that tool, like so. There you go. See, look, 
You can fix anything, right? <laughs> All right. So now we've got that on there. I can't believe I did that. And I kept telling myself, don't forget to wrap the ribbon. Okay, so this is one of the other designs for this card. Now, I kind of thought that was real stark. I mean, I, to me, it was like really, I don't know, kind of loud, especially since I've already cut out this piece here. So what I what I wanted to do to, to make that a little less stark is I'm going to just take a piece of vellum and put the vellum over the top. But before I do that, I am going to mat this to a piece of basic gray just to kind of make all of this pop a little bit. And then I'm going to talk to you about how we're going to attach this vellum. So now we're just going to mat this. Okay, so I'm actually going to use glue dots, and I'm going to be putting some things on here, and I, I'll show you later how you can strategically place these glue dots on the back of this so that um, what you're putting on top of it is going to hide it. And of course, you're not going to understand a lot of that because you don't know what I'm putting on top. But so I know that... Um, the, these bottom corners are going to be hidden by what I'm putting on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and put a glue dot there on each corner. And then um, I'm going to say probably about right here, I'm going to have another element on there. And so that is what, it's just those three glue dots is all I'm going to use to adhere this vellum to the front of that. But do you see how that kind of softened those colors by putting the vellum? Don't forget about using vellum. It can be come in real, real handy. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my um, Stampin' Seal Plus, and then we're just gonna add this little piece to the front of this card. Are you guys excited about seeing the new suite that I'm going to show you? I'm excited. I can hardly handle it. That was that was kind of bad that it showed up today because I was in the middle of designing and it kind of threw me off my game a little bit because I got so excited about all the new stuff, which of course for you guys, um if of course if you join my team, <laughs> You get to pre-order like I do. Um, and I know like Shanine, you're part of my team, so you can pre-order anytime. That makes that so much more fun. Um, but if you're a, a customer and um, you're not a demonstrator, no big deal. You can still order, but you can't order until May. Okay, so see how that helped with now this it makes this pop a little bit more. Whereas if I had just laid this on top of this paper, it kind of would have blended in. So I'm going to use some um, dimensionals to pop this up. So let me just get those on here really quick. Oh, shoot. <laughs> and I was just going to tell you this. So I'm going to be kind of building behind this. And so I didn't want them right on the edge like I just did. It's so funny. I have all these thoughts in my head about what I need to tell you guys, and then I start going too fast. I need to slow down, right? Breathe. Slow down and breathe. So basically, when I know that I'm going to be building and, and trying to put things behind, you notice that I try to keep all my dimensionals in the middle. And that way, no matter what I'm shoving behind this, it will go down okay. Now, before I lay this piece down, I think I need to lay. So I want to show you, this is this is that big die. Isn't that so pretty? And I did this with gold foil. Doesn't it, That is such a pretty image. And I'm going to kind of play with this a little bit. 
um, cause I kind of want it going off this edge over here. And I'm not sure if that's going to end up showing. So I'm actually going to use some, um, Tombow glue here, but I'm only going to be hitting, um, these big sections here with the Tombow glue. And you guys know I like to do that because I like to sometimes be able to fold things up. Don't know if I'm going to do that with this piece, but since I'm not sure, I don't want to make I don't want to make it so that it's completely securely down. So then we're just going to push those down. Okay, then we're going to come in with this piece here. And it's going to go about like so. All right, then we're gonna come in with our crane. Now this guy's a little, this one's a little more, you have to do a little more thinking on this one. So because all of these, so basically from his neck down and this inner piece, it's gonna be touching this flower here. So I don't want dimensionals, but I do want dimensionals basically right here and possibly on his foot down here. I'm gonna see, maybe not. Um, so we're going to flip that over and that's why I do what a lot of times I call it a dry run. I kind of hold it up there, look at where I'm going to be placing it, uh, before I put all of these pieces on. Um, I think I might put one on his foot. So we're going to just cut a little tiny piece from right there. These are my, these blue scissors that you see me use all the time. Are, I call them my uh, glue scissors because they're the ones that I use constantly on basically adhesive type stuff that I'm cutting. Hmm. Don't know where that came from. Okay, so then I'm going to come in with my Tombow glue and I'm, I know that it was like not his beak but his neck here and then all of this and his legs are going to be attached to that flower. So I'm going to add that glue like so. Let me get this off. And then we're going to Let's see. Yeah, I want him way over here. Oh, shoot. I forgot to take the take the paper off of this little piece that I put on his foot down here. Let me see if I can get that off. And it, of course, doesn't want to come off. Let me do it this way. All right. There we go. So again, we, you know, when you're building your cards, kind of look at what you're going to be, you know, what, what, what you want popped up, what you want down, just so it gives you kind of a good eyeball to look at things okay so now let's add in um i think i want to oh sorry so i pre-cut some of the, these leaves so let me bring these in and i used soft succulent so see what i meant about those dimensionals back here you don't want to get them so that it stops you from me from being able to place your flowers let me bring you guys in just a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Hey, Susie. So if you're just joining me, I'm doing this um, card, which is what I planned for tonight. But like I told everybody, my pre-order came in today. So I'm also going to use the Crane of Fortune with one of the new suites that's coming in and show you a really fun card um with those the, those two combined it's going to be fun at least i think so <laughs> all right and i think i might want to put this one like right up there i don't want to cover that ribbon all the way but i do want to put one of these that we stamped and cut out kind of right there Alrighty, so we're going to stick that in and maybe maybe bend it more towards this section. And then we're going to come in with one of those really pretty Mother of Pearl ones. And again, I'm just going to put glue at the top. You guys know I, I use liquid glue a lot. That glue dots... Um, 
Okay, so that one we're going to stick right there. This is probably what takes the longest, right, is kind of figuring out where you want to stick everything. Um, yes, Susie, I did expedite my shipping. I always expedite my shipping because I'm a very impatient person. <laughs> All right, so for this one, I'm going to try to figure out, do I want it behind the gold? I think I do. But I can see that I this one, it... It didn't go in as far as I wanted, so I'm just going to trim that and then see. Because what I'm trying to do is keep it on um, the designer series paper. I don't want it to kind of go off that. Okay, so I'm going to have to trim a little bit more. And this is all, you know, this is, every everybody has to do this when you're building your flowers. There we go. I think we'll do it like that. All right. So again, I'm coming in with my um, liquid glue. Yeah, I'm one of those people that gets way excited when the new catalog comes out and then our pre-order comes out. And, um, and so just so you guys know, um, we, don't get to, we don't get to get everything in the catalog, which, I mean, I couldn't afford that anyway. Um, but there's like select things that they allow us to pre-order. It's not everything in the catalog, but it's quite a bit. And so I just, yeah, it's like so exciting for me. And my husband does not understand my excitement. Go figure. So I think I want to put one of these down here, but because it's going to kind of be hanging off, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to use some dimensionals. Oh my goodness. So we'll put a dimensional there. And then I'm going to use one of these. Oh, almost used my good scissors. I'm just going to use one of these little sections right here. Again, don't forget uh, all of this outside edge of your dimensionals is totally usable. Don't throw it away. All right, so this I'm just going to kind of shove up underneath there and get it positioned where I want. And let's see. Do I need this? Do I want this? I don't know. Let me see. I'm trying to decide if I want that piece. Yeah, I do. All right, so this one I'm just going to do the, again, and remember, this is the one that I stamped off, so it's, see how dark this one is, and this one's so much lighter, I did not use a different color, um, I just stamped off. All righty. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's kind of the my design for now. Okay, so I've got all these extra pieces, which I'm sure I will find a use for at some point. Oh, guys, I hope that didn't disconnect you. <laughs> Let's see if it did. I need to make sure I turn my phone off or put it on airplane mode. I forgot to do that before I started. So hopefully it didn't disconnect you. And we are okay. So let me know if you guys are okay. Um, that usually doesn't happen during this. Okay. So let me think where I was. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to bring in this little piece here, and I'm actually going to be doing this on screen, which I normally don't do because it's loud, but I wanted to show you this masking technique. So I'm going to uh, wipe that with my embossing buddy, and then I'm going to bring in this sentiment here that says, wishing a lifetime of happiness and a world full of love. Well, I, I only want... The Wishing a Lifetime of Happiness. So again, I am going to bring in this post-it note. Now, just a note, ladies. 
Stampin' Up! is coming up, is coming out with masking paper. Ah! Are you excited? And so it's going to be paper that, like, you can, you can cut out dies and stuff with and lay them, and they're going to be the perfect match, and you'll be able to lay things over and then do, like, stamping around and stuff. I'm so excited. It's called Masking Paper, and it's one of the new things that is coming out, so pretty excited about that. Um, it's in the catalog. Okay, so you have to, the biggest thing that you have to remember to do is I inked it up with Versamark, but then you have to pull it off. Um, I don't know how many times I've done that and then turned around and stamped it, <laughs> being the goober that I am. And I'm going to try to get this centered. All righty. Looks like I got it pretty straight. Okay, so let's bring in our white embossing powder. That was one of the tools I was kind of hoping Stampin' Up! would come up with was an embossing buddy, but it's not in the new catalog, so sadness. All right, so there's my wishing a lifetime of happiness. Now it's going to get loud. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and turn it kind of away from me for just a second. Um, because it's good to let your heating tool heat up for just a bit. All right, so then we're going to bring it in. And what you're looking for here is for it to start, and I hope you guys can see that, it starts to change from a matte finish to a glossy finish. It does get pretty warm, so I'm going to turn that around so I don't, like, heat up my fingers. All right, and that's all it takes. But isn't that cool how if you want just part of a sentiment, you can do it, right? All you need to do is um, mask it off. So, you know what? I think this might be a little long. I think I need to cut just a smidgen off of each end here before I cut my banner in it. Now that one needs a little bit more. And I'm not good at cutting straight, so. All right, so then to cut a banner, if you don't have a banner punch, is you just snip right up the center and then you come in from your edges. A lot of people fold it. I've never had any luck folding it. But I have lots of luck doing it this way. It always turns out really good. So see? Works pretty good. Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing on this edge. And this way. All right, and then you've got your banner. Ta-da! Miracles, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to bring this back in. And I'm just going to use some liquid glue and put that right across the bottom there. Um, I, if I had gone longer, I might have could have done some dimensionals, but um, I don't really think it needs it as a dimensional. All right, so we're going to bring this in like so. I'm going to try to center it and get it straight without sticking my head in the camera. So hopefully, let me kind of just hold it up so I can look at it. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. All right, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this on the inside, but I have a couple finishing touches for the front of this card. And then we're going to look at a sneak peek, sneak peek of one of the new suites. I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. Of course, now, you know, all I want to do is stay up all night and create since I got all of that stuff in. 
All right. So then I pre-cut, um, I stamped and pre-cut some of these little um, dragonflies. And I want to bring um, a, three of them, like two of the big, I think, and one of the small. And again, I'm going to bring in my mini um, dimensionals. And I'm actually going to pop these up just to give them a little dimension all of their own. So we're going to put a dimensional there. And a dimensional here. And then I'm probably, I'm not sure if a full dimensional, we're going to see if a full dimensional will fit on this. Let me see if I, if I can finagle it. Oh, I did it. Okay, so remember that glue dot? And I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's right there. So there's that glue dot. And now I'm just going to cover that. So see how you can put glue dots behind vellum if you know you're putting some elements on the front. I know, Shanine, I'm so excited. I, yeah, I get so excited about new catalogs and all that fun stuff. Because, you know, more playtime for me, right? And I'm going to stick that one up there. And then this last one, I'm going to stick down here. But I'm not done. No, no, I have a little more to go. So now I'm going to bring in our wonderful Wink is Stella. And we are going to um, make these dragonflies shiny. And I know a lot of times you guys can't see this really well um, on the videos. But I'm just adding it on there. And now the other thing that I'm going to do too is I'm actually going to add some to the wings right here. With this dark shading on the crane, I'm going to add Wink of Stella there and where it's dark on his neck. And I'm just going to bring in that Wink of Stella. And, I'm, and then on the inside, again... We're going to do some Wink of Stella here as well. And Wink of Stella is very subtle, but it just got, it just kind of puts a finishing touch on everything. So let me see if I can get it to show off that one. I think I got to get it pretty close for you to be able to see the Wink of Stella. Or maybe not. Maybe you can't see it at all. It's probably my lighting. I don't know if I can catch it in there. Let me see if I can get so you guys can see it on the Oh bummer. I don't think the I don't think the camera is going to pick it up. Anyway, I can see it. It's very pretty and sparkly and shiny. And so there's our first card. What do you guys think? Isn't this a fun set? So this is actually this could be um, for a wedding, wishing a lifetime of happiness. Sending a thousand well wishes on your special day. So how fun was that card? Are you ready? Ah! <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys liked that card. Now um, I'm going to bring in the suite that, uh, that I'm talking about. And if you guys have, you guys, I can show you. Oh, I got to go out. Whoops, other way. Other way, I went the wrong way. I always go the wrong direction. Okay. New annual catalog. Dun, dun, dun. Now, yours will not come with all these tabs, nor will it come with this because I do that myself. Um, and I can't show you the inside of the catalog, but May 2022 is when you can purchase things from here. And if you do have a catalog already, because if you're a demo... Um, and you're part of my team, you might have already gotten your catalog. And so I am on page 90 and 91. And let's bring in this suite. So I've used, obviously, some of the paper. Okay. So this is the Sun Prince 
sweet. And let me show you this paper. So, um, and we're also going to be using one of the new in colors. Oh my gosh, are you excited? Okay, so here's one side of this. And then I've already used part of this. So the other side is gray granite. And I don't know if you can see it, but one of the new in colors is in here. Starry Night is part of this suite. But I kind of wanted to show you this paper. And look, look at this one. Oh my goodness, isn't that pretty? I love this paper. It's so gorgeous. So that's one side. And then the other side, it looks like this. So I'm just going to be showing you front and back. And it has some Pacific Point with the Starry Night, with Night of Navy, and gray granite. And then it's got a striped version. And then here's this one. Oh, isn't that pretty? So lots of blue here, and then there's that gray granite, and then there's this paper, and this is the blues. I don't know if you guys can see that, and then this is the last design here. Wouldn't this be pretty for Christmas? Oh my gosh! And then that. Oh gosh, guys. Pretty, 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 pretty. So you're getting a sneak peek at the Sun Prince. And it also comes with this um, 3D fern embossing folder. And I did emboss a little piece of white so that you guys could see. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. So that's part of the suite. So the paper and this. And then it comes with these, and you can tell I just got it because I don't have it on my magnet strip yet. It comes with all of these beautiful dies, which matches up with this nature's print. And this one looks like it's distinctive. Um, so you can see that it, it cuts out pretty much all of the little flowers. And then it has like this uh, you guys know I love these. I call them grunge stamps. It's like these, you know, you can do all these splotches on um, and you can like make a vintage look with, with these types of stamps. All right. Are you guys ready to see the card I made with this or make it along with me? All right. So we're doing a fun fold and we are going to be starting with a piece of thick whisper white and I'm just going to fold this like so. And then I am going to come in. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to cut a piece. Hold on one second. I got too excited. So I wanted to mat um, the designer series paper. And so, ah, uh, no big deal. You guys just get to watch me cut. <laughs> okay. So I always cut mine in half at five and a half, and then I cut my pieces from there. So this needs to be four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Because I'm, I'm matting something, and so this is basically the mat. All right, that didn't take too long. Whew. All right, so let's get this put on the inside. Now, I think I have pretty much, oh, we're, for this one, we're going to kind of put together a lot of this card before we do any stamping and die cutting. So that's going to fit like so. All right, then we're going to bring in this beautiful designer series paper, and that's going to go right on top of there. I'm trying to go fairly fast. I don't like these videos to be way too long. But again, you guys are going to get to see the starry night. We're going to be stamping with that color, one of the new in colors, and um, one of the ribbons that comes with the new in colors. 
All right, so that's gonna go like so. And then on the front, we're basically, oh my gosh, don't tell me I didn't cut that piece either. Wow, I'm bad at cutting today. Okay, so I believe this needs to be, I gotta measure it, hold on. Oh, none of my rulers are over here. Hold on one second. I moved everything out of the way so that I would have room to set all this up. Okay, so if this is, so I think it needs to be four and an eighth by two and three eighths, okay. <laughs> I kind of blew that one today. All right, so I need a four and an eighth. By two and three eighths. I was, I, so it came in kind of late today, my box, and I had to go pick up my grandkids. So I was trying to frantically um, get a card put together with this. And so that's why I'm missing some of my pieces. All right, so let's get this and put this together. And we're going to be doing some embossing. Oh, that's why I didn't stamp ahead of time. Now I remember why. <laughs> and then we're going to take this little piece. And it's going to go on the front flap here. If I can get it to go straight, it's going to go on the front flap. Oh, my goodness. Wait. Okay. All right. So that's what we have so far. Dun, da, da. All right. So now I am going to bring in. This is the Starry Night. Woo. -hoo. <laughs> and I'm going to bring in my embossing buddy. And we're going to rub it on the whole thing. And so what we are going to do here is um, I'm going to bring in this stamp from that Nature's Print, which is one of the new stamps. And I'm going to use some Versamark and ink this up. And then we're going to stamp this in this corner over here like so now I'm going to bring in this other stamp which is again from that same set and again I'm going to use Versamark and this gets a little hard because you can't really see where you've already stamped and so that can be a little tricky but we're just going to kind of do this one over in this corner like so <laughs> and it's going to stick to me. All right. So now I'm going to bring in my um, little tray and we're going to bring in our white embossing powder. And I'm just going to pour that over. And I never worry about how much embossing powder I'm using because I can always put it back in. Um, I'd rather have make sure that I've got good coverage on everything. And then one thing that I learned to have around um, is one of these kind of, it's kind of a stiff brush. And that just kind of helps me clear off any of these little like stragglers of, of the embossing powder so that I don't have, I, I still sometimes end up with dots. But, and then I can see I didn't get the end of that right there. Alrighty, so now we are going to move this out of the way so I don't blow my embossing powder all over my desk, which I have been known to do. And let's get the heat tool going. Sorry for the noise. And we are gonna heat this up.
and you'll notice it changing colors. And then I'm gonna turn that around. And again, just heat it up. Now I wanna show you something unique about this one. So, okay, Shanine, your question was, how do you clean the Versamark, you mean off the stamp pad? Um, I just use the, and you guys didn't see me do that. So I just use the chamois to clean it. So, and I didn't clean them, so thanks for reminding me. But yeah, you can just use your chamois. It'll clean it right off. I hope that's what you were asking me. All right, so now we've got this little piece here, which I'm gonna set right there. And then I'm gonna bring in my other piece here of thick basic white. And on the front, I am going to put um, one of these gray granite pieces. You know, I haven't used gray granite in a while. I was, I really fell in love with it when I first got it. And then, um, I just haven't used it a lot, but I'm so excited that it is like one of the colors in this suite that coordinates with this paper. And so this is going to go like so. And then this piece is going to mat onto that piece and I'm going to kind of do the inside of this card before we finish the front ah, if I can get it straight that gum so my, my general rule is I try to get my bottom and left and right edges down and then I can kind of lay the rest and it usually um, comes out straight. <laughs> Doesn't mean it always comes out straight, but it usually comes out straight. And so for the inside, um, and so this piece, so okay, if this one's gonna open opposite of what you're used to. And so our gray granite's gonna go on this side. And then I am going to stamp the inside of this. This card actually goes together pretty darn quick. All right, and then I've got the two of these pieces. One is to stamp something on that we're going to cut out but this one are you guys ready for it I'm gonna bring in dun 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 the starry night I'm gonna be Vanna here you go starry night or starry sky I keep saying night it's starry sky I should know that right it's they always start with the same letter and so I'm actually, for the inside of this, I'm actually going to use that same flower from the Crane of Fortune. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to see this color? <laughs> All right. There it is. There you go. There's starry sky. Wait, my camera is having problems focusing. <gasps> Pretty! Ah! And of course, it's a distinctive stamp, which makes it even prettier, right? All right, I gotta clean that off. And then we're going to use um, the same sentiment that we used on that first card, because, you know, I had to do this fast. <laughs> so I didn't have time to look for a bunch of different sentiments tonight. And again, we're going to do that in Starry Night as well. But the front sentiment is going to be from the other stamp set. The Nature's Print stamp set. And this one I'm going to, again, put up as high as I can. There you go. 
So Shanine, did I answer your question on cleaning off the Versamark off your, um, was it off the stamp? Is that what you were asking me, how to clean it off the stamp? Because you said pad and I wasn't sure what you were asking me. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. And then this is going to be on this inside of the card. Hope you guys are all still with me. I never know. You know, sometimes it just stops. <laughs> and I sit and keep talking and don't know. So, just so you guys know, I will be doing a paper share of all of the... Um, for the annual catalog, the new annual catalog, I'm going to be doing a paper share of all of the paper, um, the new paper, not all of the paper, but all of the new paper that's coming in. I'm also going to be doing a ribbon share, and I'm going to put together uh, a uh, embellishment share as well. But again, it's going to be the um only the new ones not the old embellishments and so i don't have i just got all that stuff in i don't have any of the numbers together yet but i'll be putting that together so if it is something that you guys are interested make sure you comment or contact me and let me know that you would be interested in doing that share okay so we're stopping there and then i'm going to come in and we're going to use gray granite this time on our little crane here See how I'm taking an old set and a new one? You know, and this is something that when you're looking through this new annual catalog, this is something that I like to do. Um, oh my gosh, I can't get that to close. Um, always look at the sets that you already have and picture them with these new sets. So what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks is I'm actually going to be doing... Um, everything that I'm making for the, uh, from now until May is going to be a new suite. Um, and then I'm going to pair it up with one of the old sets. Well, I call them old, but you know, one that we already know about either from the mini catalog or the annual catalog. Um, because I just want to show you guys how, you know, if, if you're ever having a problem, like deciding what you want to buy, um, you know, are you going to use it? How helpful is it going to be? Um, you know, is it going to fit? Well, maybe I'm going to finish this card. Maybe not because I can't find what I did with that die. I think I set that crane die down, not where I was supposed to, and now I'm having problems locating it. Hold on one second. That's what happens when I become a hot mess while I make... Oh, I put it back where it was supposed to. Go figure. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm going to show you this to you again. But yeah, so like what I was saying, you know, um, pair up your stuff. I mean, wait till you see... I mean, this card, um, the, the, this set is going really well together with this Crane of Fortune. And so, you know, look at what you have... And look at the new stuff and think, hey, you know, that might actually pair up really well together. But I'm going to be doing that for you a little bit in the next, uh, in the upcoming Tuesday nights. Um, just so you guys can see how to pair up old and new. And hopefully I'll have a little more time um, and I'll be able to have, like, maybe not show you a lot more cards, but I can actually, you know, uh, have them made up and show you what they look like. Because that's hopefully just as good. Okay. So there's that crane. Don't you just love distinctive stamps? I love that it, like, already puts that on there like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to adhere, put this together before I start building on the front of this card. And I'm just using my Stampin' Seal Plus because it is plenty strong enough to hold this in its place. This is what I always, with this type of fun fold card, I do try to center it, but sometimes, it's so funny, sometimes I think I have it centered, 
and then I open it and it's not centered. And so what I try to do is not push down really hard until I know I've got it in there, right? And then it's gonna close like so. Cute, huh? Okay, and so, oh, all right, are you guys ready to see the ribbon or one of the ribbons? There's like three different ribbons that go with the new in colors. <gasps> Pretty guys, look at this. This is the Starry Sky Metallic Woven Ribbon. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to do a little trick with this ribbon. So I'm going to measure three pieces, kind of top to bottom. And then I'm going to do some fun stuff with it. So there's one. Two. How, about, how many people like that ribbon? And we have this shiny metallic ribbon in all of the in colors. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell. Am I, am I a little excited? I think I'm a little excited. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my take a pick tool, maybe. And I'm actually going to fray <laughs> the edges of this ribbon because I want a frayed look on this edge. And so the best way to do it is kind of start on your edges and then see how if you start on the end, oh, I don't know if you guys can see this. Wow, my lighting is really stinky tonight. Let me put it down and maybe you guys can see better. So if you start on the end and then you come in, it is a lot easier to get this to fray. Yeah, this ribbon is so pretty and all the, uh, the, I mean, it's in all of those new in colors. And of course, the in colors are so pretty. Now, some of it does kind of tend to kind of break away a little bit. So now I'm going to come down to the other end and do the same thing, just starting on the edge. I should, this is what I should have done ahead of time so you guys didn't have to sit and watch me do this. And then you just kind of start pulling it apart like pulling it away from each other. And that's how you can get it, the edges to fray. So see how I'm just kind of pulling that apart? And then when you kind of, so I pull it apart and then I, look how it like goes back together. And so you're still getting that frayed look, but it's actually also staying together. Okay, so let me just get these other pieces done really fast. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys are getting excited about this new catalog. And, you know, the last couple of years I haven't really showed new stuff um, because I remember I didn't like have getting to see the new stuff when I couldn't have it for a month. And so I do feel a little bit bad. But again, you know, if you want it sooner, you can join my team and um, and then you have access to all of it sooner. So that's, that's one of the positives, right, ladies, about being, um, being part of a team and being a demonstrator for Stampin' Up! is we get to get this stuff sooner. Um, and as you can tell, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm just going to kind of keep, you know, you just kind of keep working this. And I'm, I'm not going to work it all the way um, and... Because I'll probably work on this card once I get this glued in place, these these ribbons glued in place. Um, then I'll um, go back and start pulling some. I'll you know I'll do this some more while it's on the card, and get it the frayed look that I really want. Because sometimes I like it to go a little bit deeper in, um, but I just don't want to waste the time now doing that. Because um, time is precious, and I appreciate all you guys hanging with me to see the finished product here so so again I'm just kind of flicking that and pulling it and spreading it apart so that it frays those edges okay so the way that I put the ribbon on is I just come in with a glue dot and I kind of line up where I want my first ribbon to be and I think I want it about right there and so I'm just going to stick a glue dot right there. And then I'm going to attach that ribbon to that glue dot. Now there's going to that crane's going to be on top of this, 
So you don't, I mean, you do have to kind of pay attention to where you're putting the glue dots, but obviously you can adjust the crane so that it, um, it will cover um, any place that you put a glue dot. And then I'm just going to lay the next one um, right next to that one. And then one more. And I'm trying to keep these glue dots pretty close because I want this ribbon to kind of lay pretty close in. Now you'll notice that some of this went off. So what I was talking about is once you have the glue dots down here, then see how you can play with this a little bit more and you can get it to fray, you know, look a little more frayed on those edges. All right. And so I'm going to use, um, let me just kind of see my placement here. So he's going to kind of go right there. But I'm what I'm looking for is where I have the ribbon. And I'm going to be putting dimensionals any place that the ribbon is not. So I just kind of get, I just kind of do an eyeball on the front to see where um, I'm going to need those dimensionals. Um, and it, you know, gives me a guide as to how far I can go down before I'm going to be hitting that ribbon. And then I'm going to cut like I did before. Oh, I'm just going to go ahead and use these. And so I'm cutting these little pieces to basically support the head right here. And then I'm going to do another one for the neck. I'm just going to cut a few of these because I know I'm going to need them on the legs as well. And again, that's one of the great things about these dimensionals, right, is they're, they're actually quite easy to, um, to, cut, to cut to the sizes that you need. And then I'm going to bring in this piece. I'm just checking to see if it's sticky on that end because sometimes I end up picking up that last little piece. Oh, I need one more. Almost done. Hope you guys can hang with me a little longer here. All right. And then I, again, I'm just going to kind of do a dry run. I think we're good. So we're just going to pull these off. Ah. Now I've got things sticking to me. Never good. All right. Okie doke. So now we're going to bring this crane in. Ah. And I want it. I'm, I'm kind of eyeing where my glue dots are. So that crane's going to sit right there. Okay. One last little thing that we're going to do to finish up this card is we are going to do a little bit more embossing. If I haven't done enough for you already tonight, we are going to do a little bit more embossing. And this is this is the, one of the sentiments from the Nature's Print. So remember, I'm using this. So I've gone back and forth. So I embossed these two pieces. And then are these two images. And then this one is from this one as well, which is the new stamp set. And so we're going to be embossing that. Oh, you know what? I don't know if this piece is big enough. Hold on one second. I think that's why I had some of those other pieces. I'm just going to do a quick check here before I do this. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. That's the die. So I, because it took me a while, I don't want to take the chance of that not being what it needs to be. Because it needs to be sticky to pick up that powder, right? And so, yes, I'm going to clean my stamp this time. But yes, you can use the chamois to clean the Versamark off your stamps. Um, and then we're just going to bring this in one more time. 
Have you guys listened to my heat tool enough tonight? <laughs> Oops. All right. So we're just going to pour that on there. All right. Get this out of the way. Bring in that heat tool one more time. We're almost done, ladies. So let me just get that heated up. I should have done this one previously. So we're just gonna bring that in and heat that up. Now understand Stampin' Up! has more than just white embossing powder. We actually have like gold and um, and then what's neat about the clear is you can actually, with the clear embossing powder, if you use the Stamparatus, you can actually stamp a sentiment um, in like the color that you want. Um, and of course this has to be on the Stamparatus because you have to be able to stamp it over it exactly. And then you can take the, um, the clear embossing powder and stamp right over Oh gosh, I don't know if that's going to be big enough. Let me see. Whoo! It's going to be very tight because of where I stamped it. All right, so I'm definitely going to need to use my post-it notes and make sure that this is going to fit. And what I'm going to do on this particular piece is kind of turn it over and make sure, so it kind of needs to come up a little bit, okay. I don't know if you guys could see that, but when I turned it over, I could see that my top edge was not going to cut quite correctly. So I'm gonna lower that just a bit, and then hopefully it didn't mess up the bottom edge. It's gonna be close. But this is one of the dies that comes with that new suite. Um, and you know, that sweet, I love all the dyes in that sweet because it not only does it, you know, cut out the sentiment, but it cuts out all of the flowers on that nature's print stamp set. I mean, just a really, I mean, look at, look at all the dyes. There's so many dyes in here. I mean, it's got standalone dyes. It's got that label dye. It's just, um, stamping up is outdoing themselves right as usual not that that's a surprise to us okay so there's my little isn't that cute so it doesn't have like the stitching that I like but it does kind of emboss the outer edge of that which makes it look super cute just trying to get clear some stuff away so we can get this card finished up and then all I'm gonna do with this is we're just gonna bring this in and I'm gonna do a dimensional on this side. I think, yeah. And then I'm gonna put just a little glue on this top edge here and a dimensional on this edge over here. And then we're going to be good to go. Just trying to get it to sit straight. You might have to hold it just a hot second. All right, so what do you guys think? There is our fun fold card. With the, what is up with my lighting tonight? This is driving me crazy. Maybe it's not as bad on your end. Hope not. So there you go with the new sun print set. <laughs> to me, it's looking too, too like shiny. So there we go. I'm just going to shut those other two lights out. So there we go. So um, we combined the Crane of Fortune with some of our new in colors, some of our new paper, and this is our card. So I hope you guys like what I did tonight. So let me bring in my first card. So again, I, you know, I started with Crane of Fortune, then got my delivery. And so this is one of the new cards. So see how you can take 
some of the new stuff that's coming and put it together with something that you already have and still make an absolutely beautiful card. And I'm pretty sure that this, this uh, image here, um, if you look at it closely, it looks like it is a distinctive stamp. And the reason I'm saying that is because I can see even the shading when I embossed. Isn't that cool? So you can see the shading even when you emboss it. All right, ladies. So I hope you like the cards. Let me know if you like them. Um, but this is the Crane of Fortune. And that's what I kind of started out. Remember, both of these are sweets. Um, this one is going to be going away. I believe the... Um, the stamp set is carrying over, and I'm not sure about the dies, um, but the paper, this beautiful paper that comes with this is not going to be. Now, all of this is still going to be available um, because, like I said, I'm pretty sure the Crane of Fortune um, stamp set is carrying over. I'm going to check that for you like super duper fast so that I can tell you the correct information. And I lied. No, it's not. So the Crane of Fortune is not carrying over. Um, but as you can see, it matches up with this beautifully. So there you go. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Again, please make sure you like, you follow, you subscribe. Whether it's YouTube or Facebook that you're watching me on, it, show, it, it helps me be able to do have more access and do more fun things in both YouTube and Facebook when the more followers that we have. So um, I appreciate all of your time. If you guys have any questions on um, any of the stuff that you saw tonight, you can always check back, especially on my YouTube. I always put a link for being able to purchase. Obviously not the Sunprint one because it's not available until May. Um, but you're definitely want, want to get the Crane of Fortune before um, the mini catalog is gone because that's a beautiful paper. Um, I And I'm going to be making some more cards with that that I will post on my blog because that paper, just standing alone, um, can, you can make some absolutely beautiful cards with. So anyway, guys, thank you. I always appreciate all of you being with me, and I will be talking to you guys next Tuesday. Bye.